Being a marketer is no sweat. You just have to manage dozens of channels, launch hundreds of campaigns, score thousands of leads, and... Okay, fine. It's a lot of sweat. Unless you have HubSpot's AI-powered marketing tools to help you do all that and more. Get started at HubSpot.com slash marketers. This is the Dragon's Lair, in association with Riverside Sports Bar Newport, an American-style bar with a proper Welsh feel. Hello, and welcome to the Dragon's Lair podcast, in association with Riverside Sports Bar. I'm Jamie, and returning to action this week is Gavin Thomas. How are we, Gav? I'm, I'm well, thank you, Jamie. Yeah, sorry for my absence last week, but uh, I am back, and I'll say raring to go. I'm not sure I am <laughs> raring, but uh, no. I am back. Yeah, so we're delighted you're back. So we are available on all the pack podcast platforms and if you haven't done so already please subscribe and leave us a kind review just like these lovely people have done so on apple Podcasts, we have a couple of reviews hot snake says proper tidy accents in-depth rugby coverage great podcast it's nice isn't it so oh, thank you to hot I'll snake Pro- proper tidy accents there you go and then mjw 2 g RFC <laughs> says always I'm not making this up by the way. That 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 was the person's uh name. Always great analysis and great guests. So that's nice, isn't it? You know, we're getting a oh. couple of reviews. That's, that's quite nice. Yes. And if you want to give us a five star review, that's always good for uh, visibility, particularly on Apple Podcasts. Yes, it does help the algorithm and helps us get out there a little bit more. So uh, thank you both for your kind words. And if you do want to leave a nice review on Apple Podcasts, then please do, and you'll get a shout-out on this pod. Right, let's start with a bit of news then, Gav. So, news from last week. Dragons might be signing former Wales and Scarlet centre Scott Williams. Now, Williams has been training with the Dragons and has been looking for a new club since being released from the Scarlets last summer. Uh, Dai Flygon says that the younger players in the squad will benefit from having a role model like Scott Williams and that he's chomping at the bit to play. Um, now, Gav, let's be honest, Dragons do have a history of signing injury-prone players that are coming to the, towards the end of their career. You know, I'm thinking of the likes of Lee Byrne, Andy Powell, Gavin Enson, St. Kirshner. The list is pretty long, to be fair. However, I think Rob my Evans. opinion... Rob Evans, yeah. <laughs> I think my opinion on this is if it's short term, if it's to the end of the season and it is to cover Steph Hughes, which I presume it is, then actually I don't think it's so bad, to be honest. You know, I am sort of in favour of this. You know, now I thought about it. If it's just, like I said, till the end of the season and he's saving camp and he's helping the younger players, I'm okay. But what, what I don't want to see is a two year deal or anything like that. But what, what do you make of uh, the potential that we might sign? Scotland. Well, exactly, exactly the same as you, I think. If it's short-term, reasonable money, then, you know, it's a it's a shot to nothing, isn't it? Yeah. Because we have got good young centres, we know that, but you need a bit more experience. And with Steph going off to America, you know, I'm mm. assuming that's what Scott Williams will do, stay with us till the summer and then bugger off to the States. It seems to be <laughs> their... Uh, we seem to be the stopping point of America for players now. We do, we particularly, do, Particularly yeah. Particularly ones who come from Scarlet. But uh, <laughs> yes. I, I, I think, yeah, he is injury prone, but he's not a bad player, is he? Oh, no, it, it's talent and ability. was never in doubt. I mean, this is a guy who's very experienced at the international level. It's just the injuries, isn't it? He's been so unlucky with injuries over the past few years. But he is fit right now. He's yeah. available to play. And Dice said he's chomping at the bit. And, it, you know, if we do pick up a couple of injuries, isn't it worth just signing him on a short, short-term deal, at least till the end of the what, season, just to what, see what what's happens? The, what's the worst that could happen? You know, what... what... And I know the call, oh, we need front rowers. Yes, we need front rowers. But yes, that's, not to say, that's not <laughs> to say we don't need strength in other positions as well. And he is responsible for my favourite moment of a game I've ever been at, when he ripped the ball off Courtney Laws yes. in I was 2011. There. I was there as well. 2012, I think it was, 2012, wasn't it? Was the, yeah, it was yeah. 2012. The twi- ripped was the there, ball yeah. off Courtney Laws, yeah. And uh, we went up the other end to score. Mm. I was and in the be... stand. Yeah, I can't remember where he was sat. It was behind the post, but I can't remember what the name of the stand was. But, I mean, he would be a good mentor when you feel like sort of 
Joe Westwood mm. and Aaron Owen because he's got so much experience and know how to pass on to them. So um, we're in favour of it, providing it is only short term. Yeah, aren't we? That's yeah. If, if, it's, it. if it's a four year deal on top dollar, <laughs> they're probably <laughs> no. not. <laughs> Absolutely not. No. Um, so nothing's been signed yet, just to make that clear. But we are looking at the possibility of signing him. So we could see Scott Williams in the Dragons jersey. Who knows? We have to keep an eye on that one. And then another bit of news, then the Dragons have announced a development fixture against Scarlet, so Ronnie Parade on Saturday, November the 9th, kick off 2.30pm. So tickets are on general sale right now, adults are £5, and under 16s are just £1, great value. Season members gain free entry. So um, yeah, I, I guess and that's to um, give some game time and minutes to the fringe players and, and the youngsters. Um, apparently we might have a game against Ospreys as well. It's like a second yeah. 15 game, isn't it, really? Yeah. Essentially, it's an A it? team. It's an A game, isn't it, really? But yeah. um, I think it's a good thing to have, isn't it, doing that international break, if we can get minutes into the, the squad. Well, particularly some of the new guys who haven't played much, like Steve Cummins and yeah. Funaki, yeah. if he's fit. Yeah, absolutely. It's a good opportunity for them. So, uh, yeah, development fixture, Saturday, November the 9th, 2.30pm, Dragons development against Scarlet's development. So um, if you go free afternoon, get down there and uh, give that a watch. Okay, Gav, let's talk about Saturday night. Um, Dragons lost thirty-one seven to Connett. Uh, Tame Basham was the the Dragon score, the only consolation Dragons try. So that result means that Connett have now won their last twelve league fixtures against Welsh teams. That's pretty good, go, isn't it? They like playing the Welsh. It's good to know we're not the only team struggling against Connett. As for the Dragons, they slipped to the usual position of fifteenth in the league, and they still haven't won an away game since April twenty twenty two against the Scarlet. So um, yeah, the away sickness continues. Now, Gav, look. We, there have been some very encouraging performances, hasn't it, in this first block? And we've talked about that on the pod. Yeah. This one, however, on Saturday night, this felt like a massive step backwards. It was the worst performance so far this season. It was pretty woeful, wasn't it? Let's be honest about it. What was your take on what you saw on uh, Saturday? Yeah, it was poor. Uh, and, uh, you know, I've seen comments saying, oh, it wasn't as bad. I don't know what you're expecting. And another saying, it's the worst game of rugby we've ever seen and all the, the coaching team should be thrown into the sea immediately. It, it's probably more that end than the other end, OK? I thought, yeah, it was poor. Uh, it was poor tactically. It was poor in execution. The set piece was shocking. Defensively, it was fine. When they did score, it, it was because we just fractured under inevitable pressure. But... The difference, I think, for me was whenever they got the ball going forward, you got a sense they would make yards, that they would cause problems. I, I did, it, was, it was about, oh, it was quite early in the game. It was about 10 minutes in. And the ball's gone out to you and Ross are on the wing. Mm-hmm. And and it, it did, just didn't feel dangerous. It was all so no. ponderous. The ball's gone away to him. And not the corner defences in. That's what the entire game was like. Every time we attacked... We just ran into the fence. Yeah, the attack. Well, I've never talking about it, actually. Um, (laughs) I feel like I'm repeating the same old things every single pod. Our attack is toothless. It's absolutely toothless. And we, we make these, we create opportunities. But when we're in the opposition 22, we just look absolutely clueless. We've got no idea. No. How to get over the game line and, and score tries and be clinical. We just can't do it, can we? We, we lack we lack a clinical edge. We lack guile. We lack invention, and we lack the basics sometimes in attack. Cause going back to you and Ross for attack as an example. So we've gone to the twenty-two. All our attack is flat. Mm-hmm. It's the 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 pump pass. From Angus to you and Rossa is signposted. Yeah, yeah. It, Connacht are a good side. They've got a pile of Irish internationals in there. On Blackwood would have been able to defend against some of that stuff. It was just, it was, it was just really simple. It, it, it's getting a bit, you know. I know how frustrated you are, but I'm getting equally frustrated now because, yeah, it, it just lacks teeth. It lacks anything. 
Yeah. So I watched this game on S4C and Gav Rissowin was doing the English language commentary on the red button and he had Sean Holly with him. Um, he described our attack as dragons trying to cut through bread with a spoon, <laughs> which I thought was a very, very apt description. A, a of plastic watching. spoon. Yes, of us trying to attack. And then Sean Holly said, I mean, I'm paraphrasing, I can't remember exactly what he said, but he said something along the lines of, oh, I've been saying for a year how poor the Dragon's attack if, attack is. And I'm like, mate, I've been saying this for more than a year. It's it's the same old story, but the thing is, I don't work for the BBC, do I? So it doesn't really count. Yeah. But I have yeah. been saying it yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have been saying for the past, what, 18 months? Mm. How bad our attack is. All and the time we've done this, this pod, pod together and before yeah. then, you know. Yeah, uh, and on the rap podcast, the other podcast I do, it's an ongoing problem and it's not getting any better. Why is our attack so toothless? Why do we lack the intelligence? Why do we lack the skill set to be clinical when it really matters? It's just we're so poor in the red zone, so poor. And and it's just it's so predictable. And and like Rio had a poor game. Uh, yesterday, and I, I'm no one for criticizing Rio because I think he's consistent. But he had a poor game, but part of it wasn't his fault. I, I think teams have worked out that these are danger, man. And there was one point where there was a big gap, there was a big gap for the center to run into, but the center's just passed it to Rio, who's had half a bloody corner on him the entire time, and he can't run, he's not running into space, he's just running into a defense. Yeah, Rio had a difficult night. He had an off night. Um, yeah. But let's be honest, Gav, he wasn't the only one. Oh, he God, was not no. the only one. Um, the first 40 minutes was pretty difficult. I tell you who did have an off night was Dane Blacker. He had an absolute stinker so bad that he had to be taken off at half time. And they put Roger Williams on. And I like Dane Blacker, but my God, that was a bad performance. Well, like, I assumed that Dane Black was selected because he's a slightly better box kicker than Rodri. And looking at the team, I just thought, well, this is about kicking. And we did kick the ball a lot. Bree didn't box kick a great deal. And when he did, it was too long. But his passing, it was a pedestrian. You know? It was slow as well, wasn't it? With the yeah. ball was- at the ruck, he was just waiting. Well, that's just what get I mean, the ball though. out, and he was, was flapping his arms and just you're thinking, well, just get the ball out. Let's and, get some but, energy and flow. But he's getting, there, he's getting out to blokes who are standing still yeah. against the defence who are moving. I, it, it's basic. It really is basic stuff, you know. And it's and it's frustrating. It's frustrating yeah. because yeah, I appreciate budget, blah blah blah. But, oh, come on, boys. Uh, you know, I play the lowest level of rugby you can play in England, and I know you don't collect all stationary. I know you need a zipper ball away from racks, you know, particularly if the defence is heavier on the fringes. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I, professionals. I, I I don't want us to be singling out players. We try not to do that. No. But he did have a stink of a first half, summed up by that tackle attempt on Key and Prendergast. Yes. I mean, he got... Put on his backside. Don't go hiding. Don't go high. <laughs> but but that happened you a know? few times. There were a couple of tackles where they just shoved us off. The Rio did one where he managed to slow Bandiaki down. But yeah. Bandiaki, it was a proper sit down moment. Bandiaki's just giving him an arm. And and Iron Owen as well as fronted up. I think it was Aki again who just sat him straight on his ass. Yeah, I yeah. know he's a big runner, but come on, boys. Hmm. Cam Jones had a tune-in at scrum time. But to be fair, this is a kid coming up against Irish international Finley Beanham. It didn't seem yeah. like a fair contest, but he was also taken off at half-time. Yeah. But we had this conversation before the game, and like, Cam Jones is helping us out. But this is a bloke who's played most of his rugby for, let's be honest, a poor Swansea team in the SRC and the, uh, the, prim- like the premiership as was. And he's coming up against one of the the best scrummages in in world rugby. Not always yeah. legal. Finley Beelham oh. does love a, a, a you know kind of an angle. But he's but been it done that gap, and he's been around the block with Cam Jones. He's, blo- he's still a pup. He's learning his craft. The, the blokes he? won grand slams. He's won championships. Mm. He's you know he's genuinely considered one of the best scrummaging tight heads in uh, 
in World Rugby. And he, well, he showed it against Cam Jones, didn't he? Because he, he schooled him solidly for 80 minutes and I felt sorry for him. And I was yeah. trying to watch it and it wasn't great because Premier Sports don't like to show binds much. And, but Cam Jones wasn't getting a bind. Finley Beelan was just getting underneath and he was moving his arm and Cam, Cam Jones had no thing and then he was getting underneath him and driving up. And anything yeah. Cam Jones did to counter him, Finley Beelan had something to counter that. Yeah, we knew the scrum was going to struggle and he really did in our first half. The second half, it got a little bit better when Chris Coleman and Aki Salui come on. We did win a couple of scrum penalties, but on the whole, we knew it was going to be a tough night at set-piece time, didn't we? And the line-out didn't function much either, did they, unfortunately? No, the the, the line-out has been a strength. This, well, I say a strength, but it's, you know, it's not been a pain in the bum. But yeah, we were dominated at the set-piece. There was one, uh, Brody's thrown it in, and it was, again, it was telegraphed. So there's a bit of movement at the front. Harry Keddie's not moved. Harry Keddie goes up. Yeah. And the the jumper, Joyce, the uh, the cornered guy, hasn't even jumped as high as Harry Keddie, but the lifters have just got him across the line. He's brought the ball back in, caught it, and the counter-attack from what was a fairly strong attacking scrum for us, attacking line-out. Yeah, um, tough night. Alan Wainwright played for 49 minutes in this game, so he made his, his return from injury. How do you think he got on, Gav? He did look very rusty, didn't he? He looked like off the pace a bit. He, you know, and I think because we've been used to Tain so far this season, and Tain's had a real dynamism. Yeah. He, he just, yeah, he looked off the pace a little bit. Well, not even a little bit. He looked off the pace a considerable amount. But it was um, great to see him back, though, wasn't it? You know? It was, yeah. And uh, you know, and we can't rely on him to do any everything anyway. You know, some other no. people need to start sticking their hand up a bit now. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know about you. I mean, it's very difficult to take away passes from the game and talk about players who stood out because I don't think anybody really came out of this game with much credit. I will say, though, I did think Angus O'Brien was probably our best player. I was, uh, um, I was just going to say. His kicking game just... was very good. Yes, he did miss a kick to touch from a penalty, which is always infuriating to me. Um, but he did put in some lovely 50-22s. Um, I thought he asked a lot of questions uh, of the Connacht defence for his kicking game. Um, I think, for me, he's the only player who you could say, yeah, had a really good game the rest. Yeah. Not so much. I mean, Tain did make a good impact off the bench as well, I will say that. Took his try very well, showed a lot of power. But um, it, it just wasn't very good, was it? Let's be honest. No one stood out. No one had a good game. It, it was a dreadful night. Angus was five and a half out of ten for me. And he was probably the best player. He was easily the best player on the field for us. Yeah, he absolutely was. The second half. Have you seen a worse half of rugby like that in recent times? I thought it was absolutely abysmal from both teams, oh, actually. Yeah. The, the skill. Um, I mean, in the first half, Connacht were very impressive. The second half, I don't know what happened to them. Maybe we did a very good job of slowing the game down. But my God, that second half was tough to watch, wasn't it? It felt like the longest 40 minutes I'd ever seen. It was really poor quality fear, wasn't it, from both teams? Yeah, and, and I've I've not been feeling great this week. And... and... Really struggled with tiredness, really struggled with staying awake. That was particularly <laughs> tough watching. And because I've got, because of my sky set, I have to watch Premier Sports either on my phone or my laptop. Yeah. I I, I had my laptop on my lap as my, my wife was watching Downton or something. <laughs> and I, I'm just trying to stay awake watching it. Yeah, it was, um, it was pretty tough. Well, A very disappointing way to end. A disappointing first block, Gav, wasn't it? We said we needed to come out of this with at least two wins, possibly three. And we've come away with one. Yeah. So how do you reflect then, Gav, overall on, on this block? What what, uh, what takeaways have you have you got from it? So Ospreys should have lost, but won. And I'll mm. take that. Re- great resilience. Leinster, I think we we give them a game for sixty minutes, which we've done for, not done this season. The crying shame for me is the two South African games. 
There yep. were sharks and lions. It was lions, wasn't it? It was lions, yeah. yeah. Yeah, sharks and lions. Both games we could have and maybe should, should have, have won. won. Yeah, should have won. Definitely the sharks game and the yeah. lions one, I think so as well, really. Benetton, yeah, yeah, that was, you know, what are you going to do? Oh, classed. Yeah, against a test team. So, but I'm competitive. Gonna, yeah. Oh, classed, but competitive. Yeah. And then. Connet was poor. But if you pull all that together, and I know Dai said, you know, we're about the process, but Dai has also said we've got to start winning and we aren't winning. And okay. Scarlet's are winning, Cardiff yeah. are winning, you know, Osprey's no, are too now. We're getting left behind again now. I wanna to bring to your attention something that Dai Flanagan said before the season started. This was in the build up to the Ospreys game, okay? Because this gives a lot of context. He said where you finish in your first six games is often close to where you end up at the end of the season. You have a good block, you get points on the board, and it usually sustains you for the rest of the year. Whereas if you're struggling after the first six games, then it's hard to gather momentum up the table. That's what Dave Flanagan said before the season started. So by his logic now, we're going to struggle for the rest of the season. Because this is what happened... Last season, this is deja vu now because we had four out of our first uh, five home games. We never recovered from that first block, did we? We talk, no. we talked about that a lot on the pod. We never recovered from it. The same is happening again. And and who are we beating? Where's the next win coming from? Yeah, who who are we going to beat? I don't think we're going to beat Scarlet in the form they're in. We Cardiff, we can't win. Yeah, you know, and I don't like sounding negative. But I'm also, you know, can people say in, in lovely reviews, oh, it's good analysis. I think it stops being good analysis. We say, oh, yeah, it could be all right. Because it's not all right, is it? Sport is a results business. And we're, 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 we're tied in with passionately. We're fans. It's, it's not a business for us. It's something we care about. Yeah. But we need to win games. We absolutely do. And it's not to worry anyway. Our next game is against Cardiff in URC, a team we haven't beaten since, yeah. oh, check notes, 2015. Uh, aside, we have a history of, oh, hang on a second, no. You know, and, and that's the problem, isn't it? Where do the wins come from? And, you know, I know we're doing a bit of a mailbag feature later and there'll be lots of co- comments coming up. Yes, I, there, there I, are quite a few interesting yeah. comments our listeners have said. Yeah. That we'll move on to that phase. I, soon, I, but... I think we've recruited what we we could recruit. Oh, we should have recruited this or recruited that. It's not out there. We've recruited what we could get with the budget, what we have. Right, you know, that's fine. But none of those are doing the job we want them to do. Well, none, you know, Tain's had a good season. Rodri's had a good season. Angus has had a good season. I'm starting to struggle now. And Ben Carter and Screech are a good season. Yeah. No, I agree. Should we move on to the listeners' mailbox then? Yes. So, we asked our listeners, our lovely listeners, for their opinions on how the first block of the season has gone. Um, As you can imagine, Gav, many of the responses um, are quite negative, which I can yeah, fully I've read, understand. I've read some. Okay. I, I understand the frustration completely. Yeah. Let's go through them. Let's see what we think. Okay, so Nick gets in touch. He says, defence has improved with an actual defence coach. Mm-hmm. Yes, that does help. Yeah. Still some players, despite their efforts, not good enough, in my opinion. However, the improvement is still there to see since last season, even if Saturday didn't go to plan. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say that's fair enough. We have made improvements. You can see that. But not but enough. Just not, not enough improvement to get results. That's and, and we're, the problem. And we're still losing all the time. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Gareth, friend of the pod, he gets in touch. Our old dragonsy ways still linger over us. We've certainly improved and have come so close to getting results. It seems that we've run out of steam with very few options to freshen up the side due to injuries. Yes, I think that's a problem for all the regions to, to contend with, to be honest. Shane Lewis Hughes has been outstanding, yes, but the jury is still out on the other new additions. The season isn't decided yet. Get out of the group in Europe, beat Cardiff, chance to be a fine thing. Uh, one other at home in the league, beat Zebra away, pick up more losing bonus points, and it's decent progress. But yeah, I mean, 
we actually need to do those things though, don't we, for it to be <laughs> decent progress. But uh, yeah, it, not all doom and gloom. It's not over yet. Well, but when there's a the point, though, when there's a the point, Jamie, right? When we sit here and go, actually, three games in the season and four, we're losing bonus points isn't enough. Mm. No, you're right. Because our point has to come soon. I think we're making, you know, I don't want to be making excuses for a professional sports team. No, absolutely not. Adam gets in touch. He says, we need to play the best players as much as possible and get a coach that can improve the performances. At the moment, that's not happening. A shocking start to the season. Nathan gets in touch and says, let's be honest, we won one game that we probably should have lost. I think we'd agree with that, Gavin. We were yeah, lucky against the odds race, you know, let's be honest. Recruitment has been poor. Winnable home games, we've ended up on the wrong side. While Scarlets have improved and got the next generation of Wales centres, we're on about signing one in their ex centres at 34 years old. What do you make of that comment, Gav? Is that fair? Oh, it's a bit unfair, isn't it? Because I think our centres are decent. Joe Westwood's a good player. Harry Ackerman, Are they as good, good, though? Good. Are they as good as Max Page and Eddie James? Max Page has played about four games of rugby. Let's all calm down a bit. He's, he's but, a good talent, Gav, to be fair. Well, he's he is a, really a good talent, talent, but so is Joe Westwood. Mm. You know, no, and, I, I, I do agree with you. I do agree. Yeah. But Max and, Page and is it, bursting onto the scene, isn't he? You know, and he's scoring tries. Right, I'm, I'm going to sound like an all space fan now, so just shoot me <laughs> universe. But Scarlets do get a lot more trumpeted in, in the press than we do. Yeah, every Welsh team does, apart from us. We, yeah, we never so, get trumpeted in the press. So, you know, like, and, and I was having a conversation with James uh, from the Ospreys Eyrie, mm. and he said, well, Max Page will be the next Welsh set that laughingly, and I said, well... You're laughing, but... Yeah, it yeah it, it's not it's not a wild suggestion. Eddie James is good. I really like Eddie James. Yeah, he's a big lad. He's a typical <laughs> Gatland player as well, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah I know. He's, but he's quicker. He's like Jamie Roberts without the uh, the dubious kind of uh, reputation and uh, a bit quicker. Hmm. I don't Joe think he's Westwood. as good as Jamie Roberts. But, you know, no, so. Joe West was a very talented player. Yes, he's got a lot of work on, particularly in defence, but he's up and coming and, you know, yeah. he's going to be an important member of this team going forward, as is Harry Ackerman, who's been out yeah. of action. We haven't seen him since he's broken his leg. So there is talent in our centres. You know, we we got to back our young talent, haven't we? I, I do see the point he's making. But yeah. like we said with the Scott Williams thing, if it's short term, it's a good idea. Yeah. No, I agree. Only if it's a short-term deal. I don't see the harm in bringing no. him in, especially if he's fit and we don't have to rehab him. Yeah. Okay, Dave gets in touch. He says, it seems we're heading back to last season's form over the last two games. Definitely concerned about our attack, yes. So we we did seem to be competing a lot better in the first four games, but only winning one out of the four home games, I feel is going to end up with us being bottom of the league by the end of the season. Well, we saw what happened last season. We failed in the first block and we never recovered from it, as I mentioned earlier, and we end up in a basement battle with Zebra. And I got a horrible feeling we're going to see the same again this season. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. Who gets in touch? The voice has been far more entertaining than the Dragons, and that's absolutely dire. I mean, I haven't seen an episode of The Voice for years. I don't know if you have, Gav, so I'll have to take Hugh's word for it. But apparently... It, it was the on voice... BBC One the last time I watched it. And, yeah. and, Will, and Will I Am uh, ended up getting a male Tina Turner impersonator for his last pick. Yeah, so, and that uh, must that... have been a decade ago. <laughs> he was saying that's more entertaining than The Dragons. So, um, OK, fair enough. Fair enough, I guess. Um... He's, he's not... <laughs> no, but the thing is, right, the, 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 that game wasn't entertaining. No, it's Could... terrible. Yeah. I remember, I've got American, American relatives, and I was watching rugby on TV. I was watching, it was Bristol Gloucester mm. a, a while, and it was one of the greatest games of rugby I think I've ever seen because neither team wanted to defend. And the American relative was saying, oh, this is insane. This is one of the greatest sports I've ever seen. Yeah. I think if I showed them that uh, Dragons uh, uh, Cornet game, you know, he'd have probably, well, He'd have probably gone the first flight back to Minnesota. He could have managed, to be honest, because it was hideous. Yes, one for the purists, I think they say, <laughs> don't they? <laughs> yeah. uh, the, yeah. the masochists, I think, yeah. rather yeah. than the purists. Well, we as Dragons fans are saying the masochists. Yeah. We must be, we put ourselves through this every single year. Definitely the masochism part. Yes. Uh, Matthew gets in touch. 
Our attack has been woeful. We just seem to go side to side and get smashed back each time and then kick the ball away. Yeah, sounds familiar, doesn't it? If we play like we did on Saturday, then we will be 16th come the end of the season. And if that happens, I want die gone. Now, this is where we start again to yes. die well, out. Because the fans have... It, it, I could sense it last season. There was a bit of discontent growing yes. around die. But this season now, especially, oh, that we've gone yeah. back to being losing again, it's... You can sense the fans. We've got to be careful with Facebook, mind. It doesn't represent the fan no. base. It's not entirely representative, but you can feel it on social media, on the forums. There's a growing discontent now towards the, the coaching. So, so uh, there's two points, really, kind of come out of it for me. One is, uh, well, I'll, I'll go back to that. So I, I listened to her on, or watched her on Premier, and they were saying the Dragons are the team that kick it most in the URC. Yeah, and we and we kick nearly eight percent more than the next highest kicking team, and which is fine if your kicking's accurate. The second, the, the my question, and it reminds me when I went on the the Black Feather pod when I said, "Oh, I think we could finish 13th. and uh, the horse goes, "So who finishes below you?" Yeah, so yeah, yeah. But if we get rid of Dow, who replaces him? Well, this is the problem, isn't it? Um, I've seen a yeah. lot of people saying uh, to we Booth, and it's like, get that idea out of your head. He wants out to Welsh rugby. He is not going to come to the Dragons. I would love Toby Booth to come to the Dragons. I'm one of his biggest fans. I think he's great. I think he's done a superb job at the Osprey. Uh, he's not going to come to the Dragons. Get that idea out of your head. Someone did say to me, because someone said I, I should go, and I said, well, who would you bring in then? And he said to me, die young. That's just the calibre of coaches now that we're we're going through. No one's got any real strong candidates. Or the other popular favourite is Pat Lamb. And it's like, well, no, because he's in a long-term contract with Bristol. (laughs) So we can't have him either. I mean, again, I love Pat Lamb. paying him three times more than we could afford to pay him. Yeah, he's on a big fat contract and there's no way he's leaving that to come to us, quite frankly. so It'd uh, it'd be like us as county fans saying, well, we'd like Jose Mourinho or someone. (laughs) It's just not going to happen, is it? (laughs) <laughs> get the idea out of your head but that's the problem people say die gone but then when you question well, who comes in they either come out with silly answers or they're like oh I don't know there must be somebody you know it's, that's the situation we're in well there, there probably is somebody are they better than what we've got already who knows well a lot of people wanted Fia Tietia to be head coach didn't they that that was the he's not had a good history but... as a head coach I think we need to you know the Put on our realism pants here a little bit. Mm. And he's had two quite short spells as head coach. He's predominantly been second wheel. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I think he's got, there's a lot of love for Philo, Philo because of his time at Ospreys as a player. Yeah. That's different jobs, aren't they? Yeah, exactly. And look, I, I really don't want us to be speculating about head coaches if we can help it. Um, We've had Dai on this pod. He's a really nice guy, Gav, isn't he? He's really passionate about the region. And I think he is a really good coach. But I do fear if results don't happen in the next block, I think there's going to be a serious conversation going on in the media and with the owners. And I we, don't want that to happen. I'm desperate no. for Dai to turn this around. I really am. We run by businessmen and eventually they'll make a business decision. Yeah. I, I'm just desperate for him to turn around, but we'll wait and see. Well, uh, so am I as well. I, I kind of I liked him as a coach, and then when we spoke to him, I I, I liked him and respected him yeah. even more. And I do, you know. But this conversation is happening now, and we can't sit here on the pod and go, "Well, we disagree with it, therefore we can't discuss it." Yeah, we can't ignore it, Gav. Can we? No. You know, and the longer these results go on for, we we just we can't ignore it. Um. This brings us on to the, the comments then. So, Leighton says, Dai Flanger should step aside. He's not good enough to be a regional head coach. You know, that those are some of the comments that we had. Jeremy said, still don't think Dai Flanger knows where his best 15 is. However, we are going backwards again, which is very worrying. Alid got in touch. He said, we need to bring a new attack coach and fly half for the next season. Out of all the new signings, I really like Shane Lewis Hughes. I think he's been by far the best signing. Yeah. Let's be honest. Uh, my favourite player this year by far, but he says, I was expecting a lot more from Lloyd Evans. Now, we've spoken about this on the pod, haven't we? I'm still not entirely convinced by Lloyd Evans. No, There's something mind. that just doesn't convince me about it. And it's not just the goal kicking either. His goal kicking is really poor. Um, 
I, I'm not convinced. And go and go there either, uh, yeah. and neither is his distribution. And, you know, essentially that's what you want from a 10. Isn't it? The thing is, it's a weird one. I don't think he's been bad, but I don't think he's been particularly good either. It's he, just he, been okay. He's, he's been no better than than Will Reed was last year. Mm. I don't think he's been much better than Will Reed. Yeah, but is he probably our best option for 10 right now? Lloyd Evans, yeah, probably. Or do you play Angus at 10 now? Now that Kai Evans is back. Is Angus our best 10? Or do you prefer him at fullback? I prefer him at fullback because mm. I, I don't think Angus really... and Well, I say he doesn't unlock the attack. Nobody unlocks the attack. But neither no. does Lloyd Evans. And Kai Evans can play 10, as we know, but he's not a 10. No. That he, he's a fullback he, as well. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We we we've got fullbacks who could play ten, yeah. haven't we? That, that's that's part of the problem. But uh, yeah, um, I need more convincing on Lloyd Evans. I know he scored a lot of points for us. I think he's in the URC's top points scorer in the top ten. But I'm not entirely convinced as of yet from what I've seen. So uh, yeah, that's where we stand on that one, Gav, isn't it? Mm. Graham got in touch. Defense has been a real positive this season. We really need to sign some good players next year and possibly a new attack coach. Now, this is a recurring theme. Matt O'Brien is not convinced in supporters, Gav, since he's been appointed as attack coach. And a lot of our listeners are saying we want a new attack coach. I don't think the new signings have had much of an impact except for Shane Lewis-Hughes. Proof of the pudding of anything is in, you know, in the eating, isn't it? And Matt O'Brien is attack coach. And, you know... It's like having red with a spoon to quote uh, Garfrey so yeah, 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 you know, it's a good quote. I know, and, and that's the point. You know, if if that's what it looks like, there's a problem. In in terms of the signings, only Shane Lewis Hughes has had any real time in the team, hasn't he? So him and Lloyd Evans. So you've got to be fair. Yeah, yeah. Harry Wilson hasn't really got you know done a lot yet since that Sharks game. He's been. Well, he hasn't featured much at all, is he? So no. He's sort of been in and out of the squad. Um, it's been very telling, actually. I, I'd like to see him start a few games now. I think yeah. we really need to have a look at Harry Wilson because I think there's a player there. Yeah, and we so can't well. keep punishing him for what happened in our Sharks game. No. Yeah, yeah, and off day, he missed some tackles. It happens. Other players in the team have missed tackles. Mm. I'll be put yeah. on their backside. So. Cummins hasn't had much chance to play yet. Yeah, we haven't seen enough of him yeah. yet. No, no. Oli Burrows has not much chance to play yet. No, he pulled out from yeah, Wilness. The last, yeah, last sack, didn't he? Mm-hmm. So, and then who else is new signing? Well, we uh, haven't seen Stolman Funaki. We yeah. haven't seen him yet, no. So we'll have to wait and see. He could be a really good signing, by the way. Yeah. But, like you said, Gav, the proof's in the pudding. And so far, it's pretty clear that Shane Lewis Hughes has been the best signing by Country Mile. He's been fantastic. And he should have been in the Wales squad, but we'll talk about that. But, you know, but that later. doesn't take Nostradamus to, to work that out, does it? No. We, we said he was going to be a great signer first, didn't we, at the, at the yeah. time. You know, we knew he was, he was a good, he was but... good player for Cardiff. Yeah. You know, stands to reason to be a good player for us. Yeah. Just a couple more then before you finish up, because we had loads of comments. Thank you to everyone who uh, submitted their comments. Simon says, this team makes too many mistakes to ever win anything. Harsh but true. We are our worst. <laughs> we are our own worst enemy, Gav. How many mistakes do we make every game? It's true. It's true. Uh, Kevin says, taxi for Flanagan. And then finally, Richard says, there have been improved performances and a bit of grit. Yeah, agree. But Saturday felt like a step backwards. Absolutely. If this team can play with the intensity that they showed against the South African teams and not drop that standard, they could still have a good season. So that's a a, a positive note to end on. All is not lost yet. It, It might not be a disastrous season. It's just at the moment it feels that way because of that dreadful performance. Um, so that's it. Look, Gav, that, those are the comments. And there were many, many more. I'm sorry we couldn't read out all of them. We haven't got time, quite frankly. A lot of them repeat themselves. A lot of yeah. get, die out. We need a new attack coach. Lots of similar um, themes, weren't there? Absolutely. I don't agree with all the comments. I agree with some. But to be honest, Gav, I understand the frustration. I yeah. really understand their frustration. Do you? Do oh, you understand? God, yeah. yeah. I, I am not the bloke who shouts at the... Well, I used to be, but I'm not... <laughs> the last couple of years, I've not been the bloke who shouts at the TV. 
but I, I, there was one point last night where I was genuinely more interested in what was happening in Downton than, uh, <laughs> you know, admittedly, 10-year-old TV series. But, you know, like my wife was watching that and I was more interested in what was happening in Downton rather than what was uh, happening on the screen. And that's not good. No. So we're in 15th now, which is our usual position. That's where we finished. Yeah. For the last three seasons. I mean, you could argue that the Dragons are probably where they should be. I mean, that's a slightly negative and pessimist way to look at it, but maybe we just are that team. Maybe no, we are I, where we should be. Or should we actually be doing a lot better than what we're doing? But there's two lines to it, isn't there? Yeah, probably. Mm. We are the 15th best team in the URC. Yeah. But we've lost that argument. Or we have the old budget argument. Do you feel the other teams are progressing better than we are? Well, I don't, think, I Os- way, I don't think Ospreys are, but... Uh... But they're not going to be bottom three, are they? No, no. Because at the end of the so. season, they're going but, to be climbing up there. But, but Cardiff look a decent side, and Scarlet look considerably better than I imagined they'd be, so... Yeah. Do you still uh, take stock in your opinion that we're going to finish above the Scarlet? No, or you're slightly... <laughs> You've rolled back on that the, one. That the, one they've, they've won three games, and I genuinely don't know where we're going to get another two wins from. So, yeah, we've reached that stage already. In the a lot of people might say it would be a negative. I don't know, but you you've heard the comments from our listeners, so it's not the, just us. The, the, the general feeling among supporters is frustration. But we, we've got to be realistic, Jamie, and kind of we are genuinely quite positive men on this pod. We try to be, yeah, absolutely, yeah, but. You know, we both understand rugby as a game, mm. and we we're struggling to see where wins are coming from, and that's yeah, not Dave, being negative. That's just being realistic. Absolutely, Dave Flag has spoken a lot about process, about all yeah. about the process. But you can't dress up, Gab. It's a results based business, and dragons will always be judged on results, whether we like it or not. They're not going to be people that are on the outside, ordinary Joe. Don't look at the dragons and think. Oh yeah, they're good processes. Yeah. Well, they look when... at the results. They see it on Facebook. They see it on social media. They look at the results and they shrug their shoulders and go, "Oh, dragons lost again. They're rubbish." Yeah. That's what who... people think. When you first fell in love with sport, any sport, who did you fall in love with? Which player? Which team? Uh, I love Scott Quinnell. I did when I first got into rugby. I loved Scott Quinnell. He was my hero. Yes. Mark Ring for me. Yeah, they those process players. They were both very good at what they did. Mm. You know, Mark Ring was a great creative player. Scott Quinnell in winning teams. You know, Mark Ring was in the winning Ponty Pool team. Scott Quinnell in the Lions and everything else. Yeah. You know, people don't fall in love with process, they fall in love with winners. Yeah. No, they absolutely do. So we need some results in the second block because otherwise, if we carry on in our fame as we did in Cornet and carry on losing, it's. um. It's going to get very grim again, isn't it? It's going yeah. to be another one of those seasons, and the supporters don't deserve that. They really don't deserve it. Right, before we move on then, a word from our sponsors, Riverside Sports Bar, with multiple HD screens showing all the latest sports action. You'll never miss a match on TNT Sky and Premier Sports. There's a wide range of delicious food and drinks to keep you going throughout the game, from juicy burgers and crispy wings to refreshing beers and spirits. There really is something for everyone. They're located next to the river on Clarence Place. And for more information, go to www.riversidesportsbarnewport.com. Uh, I will confess, I was in the Riverside Sports Bar on Saturday. We went there before the Newport County game. I had a Welsh Pride burger, and it was bloody lovely. And my wife had a October hot dog. And that looked very, very nice. The food is great, Gav. It really is. Well, was it like a bratwurst type thing? Yeah. Uh, like a German-style hot dog? And they had what this sauce of crowd, there's no that stuff on it. It had all, all they had the works on it. It looked very, very nice. But my burger was banging. It's really good food. I'd urge anyone, if you're in the Newport area, you fancy a bite to eat burger or hot dog, whatever, get down to the Riverside Sports Bar. Okay, then, Gav, it's time for your Gwent Rugby Roundup. What's the latest? So we'll start in Super Rugby Camry, where being a Gwent uh, fan is uh, a positive time. So mm. uh, Ponty Pool played on Friday night against a friend of the pods, Hugh Gustafsson, Swansea team at uh, at St Helens, yeah, and yeah. won forty three ten. That places them in fourth in the league. 
Newport uh, won 62-7 at home against RGC, which places them in third. Stay Hope and Will Reed, Dragons halfbacks, played in that game. Yeah, and I, uh, uh, yes, I, I think there's there's some quality there, isn't there? Those guys yeah. who played regional rugby are showing. And then uh, Carmarthen Quinn's 11, Eberville 39, which places Eberville good in win. second on points uh, difference behind Cardiff. Yeah, very good so, win. Gwen teams all in the, the top positions there. So into the Premiership, also good day for Gwen teams. Cross Keys 34, Newcastle Emlyn 17, and then Narba 30, Newbridge 36. So so good in the top two leagues, all our Gwen sides won. In the Championship, uh, Aberdeen 5, Penalta 28, Bedwas 37, Glamorgan Wonders 31, Brimau 14, Bezai 26, so Brimau's tricky start continues, and Tallywine 37, and this D17. That, that's a localish derby, isn't it, Tallywine it and is. Anisty? Yeah, yeah, it's not far. Yeah, not far at all. Mind you saying all wet sides aren't <laughs> it's far just up the road. The, the, that's what you're saying. Oh, yeah, it's just up the road, that is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, in the Division 1, uh, Abdelary Blind of Gwen 25, Newport High School All Boys 8, Bedlinog 47, Abergavenny 19, Blynavon 27, Monmouth 30, cracker of a game that, and uh, Pontypool United went away to Nelson and lost 26-9, unfortunately. Into Division 2, another cracking game, Abercorn 24, Caldicott 25. Sounds good. Mm. Well, yeah, I bet that was uh, ding-dong, that. Uh, Blackwood 40, Cumbran 10. Blainer 22, Pill Harriers 15, Kreuzer Kiliog 52, Risker 20, and Gondify 39, Ask 13. Division 3, Killian 14, New Panteg 24, Chepstow 20, Rumney 28, Fleur de Lee 64, Abatusog 7, not a pleasant day for Abertus. So no, not really. <laughs> no. uh, an absolute cracker at Machen, where they drew 26 all with Nandy Glow, and Oakdale 14, Newport Saracens 22. Into Division 4, Bedwelty 12, RTB Evervale 19. Good season for RTB so far. Yep. Crickhole 42, Fordside 24, Gwynaved 31, Flanillaf 12, and Pontham Fife seven, Whitehead thirty three, Pontham Fife again, another team was found promotion to be tricky. Yeah. Division five, both for twenty one, Havard Aranis forty three, Derry forty eight, Blackwood Stars five, and Westmond stinking start of the season oh, into no. this. What was the, the score this week? Hartridge eighty nine, Westmond nil. Oh, so dear. they have had yeah, yeah. Nice club, Westmont. Always had a lot yeah. of time from when I was at home, but they're just struggling at this level. I think they're struggling to get a team out, and you know it's showing on the pitch. Yeah, they've had some really heavy defeats, haven't they? Poor Westmont. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And then last one, Mago, eight to Iron sides, twenty-eight. In the division six A, Old Hilarians thirty-six, Cum County United nil, Trinant fifty-two. Brynifle nil. That is genuinely is a local derby. I think you can see each other's pitches from yeah. uh, from the and then a new set of results for us into the Dragons Athletic League. So for the second fifteens, Nelson uh, second fifteen twelve, Blackwood second fifteen twenty six. Hmm. So I've discovered I can get those results now. So we're getting even deeper into the world of Grand Rugby, and we also have a. Update from our friends at the All Stars, Dragons All Stars. A fantastic day of free flowing rugby at Eugene Cross Park, Ebervale, the Cineglass Community Stadium, to give us the official title. <laughs> the Dragons All Stars running out victors 51 26 versus Bolton to maintain their running, winning, uh, running streak of 13 unbeaten games. The game was played in true mixed ability rugby spirit. Next up for the All Stars is away to Port Albert Panthers on Sunday, the third of November, and I am determined to play this one game for the All Stars before <laughs> the end of the season in my never-ending retirement year. <laughs> Fair play to the All Stars, mind. That's that's a cracking result they're going. But it's nice to see a Dragons team actually with it, isn't it? 
They, well, they, yeah, uh, the, the wheelchair team and the All Stars. Yeah, they're uh, good. Yeah, and and the girls under 18s are all doing well. Yeah, yeah, fair play. Uh, thank you for that update, Gav. Right then, international rugby is just around the corner. And Wales have named their squad, 35-man squad for the Autumn Nation Series. So four Dragons got a call-up, the Fab Four, as we're going to call them. Um, Aaron Wainwright, Rio Dyer, Ben Carter, and Rodri Williams. To the surprise of many, including Rodri himself, who had booked a trip to Alton Towers and then had to cancel it because he'd been called up to the Wales squad. Um, Derry Lake's going to captain the side again this November, having done so on the summer tour to Australia. So the notable omissions then, obviously, Brody Coughlin, um, pretty disappointed not, not to see him there. Chris Kerwin wrote an article saying it was a relief not to see him in the squad because he can concentrate the Dragons and, you know, get more game time. Who's the other hookers in the side? I was on, I, I was away for work and I, uh, I didn't so, really give a chance um, to look at it. So it's Darry Lake, obviously. Then it's Ryan Elias, who you like, you're a big fan of him, and yeah, Cardiff's. Okay. Cardiff's Evan Lloyd, who I'm All right. not a big fan of, I'll be honest. I've not seen it with him. But he's, anyway, he's you know. fine. Yeah, Evan Lloyd is fine. Yeah, I, I do like Brian Elias. Guess from the park lot. Mm, yeah. So, yeah, disappointing not to see Bodhi. Uh, in there, Shane Lewis Hughes missed out, unfortunately. Leon Brown. Now, I think, to be fair, I'm kind of glad Leon stopped being called up. Um, only because he needs more game time and yeah. more minutes under his belt because there has been this cycle with Leon Brown where he gets injured, comes back, plays a couple of games for Dragons, gets caught up for Wales, comes back injured, yeah. comes back for Dragons, two games, gets caught. That cycle is just not good for his development anymore. So yeah. I'm really pleased, actually, the one Gatland, you know, he said he had some concerns with his fitness. I think he needs to stay with the Dragons, get more game time um and get back to being the prop that we know he can be. So I think that's probably for the best, if I'm honest. Team Basham misses out and Matthew Screech as well misses out. So Gav, what, what do you make of those omissions? Like is four the right number of dragons? Would you like to see more? Do you think that's well, well the right I, core? I, I I I thought we'd have five in the squad. Mm. And so we know Rio Dyer and but I also thought we would have Shane Lewis Hughes, Tain, and I thought Brody Coughlin would get called in. Yeah, you know, I'm pleased, really pleased for Ben. I, I think Rio Day is there because who else do you select? Because his form's not been great. The, the back row is disappointing to me because Shane Lewis Hughes would have brought a bit of balance, and. I'm dull. I'm old fashioned. I like I like a shit of six. I like an eight an eight who's gonna break the game line and I like a, a fetcher at seven. And Shane he's Lewis probably, brings a six, doesn't he? He's probably missed out to guys like Tane Plumtree as well, who has well, been in fantastic form for the Scouts. Well, well, I think Tane and Shane Lewis Hughes, they're victims of our back row depth. Yeah. Plumtree that, and, Sh- and Chris Shunza mm. are the players who've been selected in front of Shane Lewis Hughes. Because they're all hybrid players. They're both hybrid players as well. And Shane Lewis Hughes is. I just think Shane Lewis Hughes is an actual six. Yeah. he can, He's a six who can play lock. Um, yeah. But he's clearly better at six. And he could do a job at eight. But he's a blind side. That's his yeah, position. You, you, you just want somebody who's not in players on the, on the short side of the field. Yeah. Well, I think what we'll end up with is Rafael at six, Jack Morgan at seven, and Wayne or at eight. No, I think it'd be Tane Plumtree at six, personally. You think so? I, I do. I think he's in very, very good form. I could see Plumtree, uh, Morgan, and Wayne Wright at eight. I it's mean, some fun, people but he's are not questioning. A six plum tree. <laughs> no, some people are questioning whether they put Aaron Wayne Wright in um, because he hasn't played much rugby. But when has our stop one Gatland before? He's done this with many players yeah. like Liam Williams. And well, yeah, hasn't he? In the past, oh, he's yeah. picked players without very little game time and chucked them straight into the squad. So, and let's not forget, Aaron Wainwright is Wales' play of the year. Yeah. He was voted Wales' play of the year, so you want him in there. I know he looked rusty against Connor, but that would be my back row anyway. It'd be Plumtree, Morgan and, and Wainwright. But you, you'd go a different way, would you? We'd have Rafael as six. No, I wouldn't. That's what I imagined they'll end up with. I, I would have I, I'd have Shane Lewis Hughes, Wayno mm. and, uh, and Jack Morgan, but uh, I'm obsessed with back row balance. What about Rodri Williams then, Gav? Because 
that, that came as a surprise to me, but I'm absolutely bloody delighted for him because how many times have I said on this yeah. podcast and on rap, Rodri plugs away every week. He's so consistent and he's been overlooked by Wales for years. And now suddenly out of the blue, he gets this call up. But I did expect to see Ro- um, Ruben Morgan Williams in the team and a lot of Osprey supporters yeah. did as well. But um, I'm delighted for him. I'm really pleased for Rodri. He deserves this. Scrum off's not position of strength, is it? You know, I like Rodri and he's a good player, but it's no position of strength. And basically, it's you know, it's Tom Orson to others. Mm, Ellis Bevan is in there. I, I like Ellis Bevan. He's very polite to my son because when my son asked Ellis Bevan where Mason Grady was, so you could have a picture with him. And he went, <laughs> he's gone, you can have a picture with me. And my son just looked at Ellis Bevan and went, oh, yeah, I suppose. Yeah. I, I like <laughs> so, well. so, yeah, I've got time for, him for that. Max Llewellyn from Gloucester, Gav Anscombe back in the team. Is that the right decision to bring him back? Yeah, and, and all those Gloucester boys have been playing well. You know, Ken Max Llewellyn uh, has been playing well at Gloucester. Uh, it, it, oh, God, what's the guy's name? Uh, the second row. Freddie Thomas. Freddie Thomas, yeah. He's, he's decent as well. So Freddie Thomas has been linked to the Dragons. I think I sent you the link, didn't I? Did, uh, yes. Some time ago. So Steph Thomas from Wales Online saying the Dragons are front runners to sign Freddie Thomas. I don't know how true that is, but um, no. we've been linked to him. So I'm I'm quite keen to see how we yeah. get on. I He's tell you who I am for Gloucester. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you who I am pleased to see back in the pack. The one I think is going to make a big difference to us is former Dragon Will Rowlands. Because yes. I think oh, yeah. we've really missed him, Gav, haven't we? And we know how good Will can be for that grunt physicality and ball carrying and set-piece work. Big, horrible lump of a bloke who's playing really well at Racing, you know. Mm, yeah. And taking my Dragons out off as well, looking over players, Nicky Smith. How ironic that Nicky Smith, who hasn't actually been playing any better for Leicester, uh, for Leicester Tigers than he was at the Ospreys, but he's getting more traction and getting more noticed. He leaves Wales. <laughs> Suddenly, he's straight back in the Wales squad. You know, I, I'm, away at the I'm Ospreys, pleased for him Gatlin to be back in. No, yeah, pleased for him weird. to be back in. Don't you think that's weird, though, how he's been consistently the best scrumgeon loose prop in Wales for the past two years, doesn't get a look in. As soon as he moves over the bridge, Gatlin's like, yeah, I'll pick you. I just find it weird. He, he does have a thing with the Ospreys, doesn't he? Oh, don't even start now, conspiracy fees. You sound like James on rap. <laughs> Everyone hates us. Scotland hates us. Well, do you know what? I saw an, an Ospreys fan on Twitter, and uh, like he was saying, well, I'm pleased he's ignored us because it just means we can focus on uh, on Ospreys until a proper coach comes in. <laughs> That's a... I do think they have been hard done by. I mean, I look at guys like Morgan Morris and... He should be there. Give him a chance. Let's just see. How do you know he's not in national standard until we give this guy a chance? But again, it's the it's the back row depth, though, isn't it? You know. Well, and and this this is the point, isn't it? With it's not a conspiracy against Morgan Morris. He is a number eight during a period of strength and depth in Welsh uh, back rowers, where we have in no other positions. Mm. And he's so, not really a line out option, is he? Like no, I think that's the other problem. It, you know? He's not. He's he's not as athletic as the other options in those positions. As Plumtree, as Wayno, you know. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Morgan Morris. I, I would have loved to have seen him in a Wales shirt, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. I like him. I, li- I like him, him as a player. I think he's a good player. I don't think he's anything better than what's already there. Mm. Former Dragon Nick Tompkins. I'm surprised to see his name in there, but um, he's in the squad. Ben Thomas, who was described by Warren Gatland as Wills' best back. Do you agree with that? I like Ben Thomas. I, I like him a lot. Talented player, isn't he? He's He reminds me of Mark Ring. When Mark Ring used to play mm. at 12, just really jinky, creative player at 12. Yeah, absolutely. When I look at this squad, Gav, do you know what? I think it's a really good squad. I mean, people always take aim at the Wales squad. It'll, it'll never please everyone because you got people wanting their favourite players from their club in their team. But I think this is one of the best Wales squads Gatland has named in a long time, actually. It is this does make sense for for the most part. It's certainly the best squad since the World Cup. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. So then if you look at the fixtures, Wales have got only three games, there's no fourth international. Which is unusual for Wales, but it is free this year. So Fiji, Australia, and South Africa. 
realistically, Gav, how many wins we're going to get two. to them? Two. We so, could win two. In re- realistically, none. But we could win two. We aren't beating South Africa. No. And we probably Gatland... aren't beating the other two, but you know, it's... So if Gatland doesn't get two wins, he gets one, do you think that raises even more questions about his future? Because Wales have a win a game in 2024. I'm not counting the Reds because that wasn't a competitive game. I'm talking about proper competitive test matches. Who we haven't won a game in 2024. Who replaces him? Toby Booth. <laughs> I'd, I'd, start to, I'd start supporting <laughs> England. <laughs> no, but he is under pressure, Gav, isn't he? He is, he under, is under pressure. pressure. But I'll ask the question again. Who replaces him? Hmm. Yeah, that's there's the, no ready-made replacement, is there? That's the problem, isn't it? That that's the problem. All the potential replacements are already in jobs. Yeah, and on long-term contracts like Pat Lamb. I mean, Pat Lamb was—he did actually say in public, didn't he? He would fancy coaching Wales. He did put that out there. But goodness me, it cost the arm and the leg, wouldn't it, for the WRU to get him out and of he can't, uh, contract? He can't coach teams to defend. Bristol are great to watch. They're so entertaining, but the, defense they, is optional with them, isn't it? But they, uh, I can understand why a lot of people like uh, them. I'll use Josh Gardner's phraseology from Blood and Mud for this. They're a profoundly unserious team. Oh, they are. <laughs> they are. And I know Bristol fans, and they say, well, it's brilliant to watch. Yeah, but it must give you a bloody heart attack at times. Yeah. And Saracens, you know, they may not play sexy, attractive rugby, but they play title-winning rugby, don't they? And Bristol just don't play title-winning rugby. They play rugby based on vibes. But it's great to watch, but it, it won't win them a Gallagher Premiership title, I don't think. Playing no, that it kind won't of because because they'll get to the playoffs and they'll come up against a Saracen, so they'll come up against a Northampton who will just grind them and play horrible rugby, but they won't care because they'll win. Yeah. And we're trying to, you know, Dragons are trying to play this expansive rugby, aren't we? But for me, I just rather play really dull, tedious, physical rugby, you know, unsexy rugby, but win games personally. I like 10 man rugby. I've, I, I used to love flowing rugby when I was a kid. I like 10 man rugby now. Yeah. Don't give it to the backs. They never do anything with it anyway. <laughs> Just, but then you need a, a powerful, you know, and it's, that's an old fashioned view. You know, you can't play yeah. 10 man rugby anymore. Mm. But uh... so going back to Wales, then I think for me, two out of three, that, that's got to beat the aim. We can beat yeah. Fiji. I know Fiji are going to be tough. Um, yeah. They always are when we play them. Australia, they are showing signs of improvement but we can under Joe them. Schmidt, but it's a winnable game at home. Um, two Sunday games, which is interesting. That's how far Wales have fallen now. We're not prime time anymore. We've been shunted to the Sunday afternoon slot. It's but irritating the game that... because it means I can't go to any of them. Yeah, I apparently ticket sales have been very slow as well for the Sunday games. Yeah. So uh, we'd be interested in to I've see. I've been how offered many tickets like at, at reduced cost. But mm. I can't, you know, I have to be back in Sussex 8 a.m. on Monday morning. There's tickets go in, free tickets for Blue Light Card. So if you work in emergency services, you can get tickets through there. But um, I, I don't think I'll be going to any of them. But for me, anyway, it, it's got to be two out of three. We're not going to beat South Africa. I think they're too strong, no, no. too powerful, too good for us right now. But there's no reason why we can't beat Fiji and Australia with our squad. Um, and if not, then... I think more questions will have to be asked about Bon Gatland, I'm afraid. But uh... a swap. Gatland the Dragons, die at Wales. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be an interesting swap, wouldn't it? <laughs> Goodness me. Okay. Um I think we'll leave it there, Gav. It's been a busy one. We got through a lot. Unless there's anything no. else you wanna no. bring up? No. Okay, brilliant. We'll leave it there. Um we are taking a short break for the Ultimate Nationals, and I'm on holiday next week. So I'm um, not sure when we'll be back, probably sometime later in the month. Uh, but Gav, thank you for joining me. And thank, thank you. you to Riverside Sports Bar for supporting us. And thank you to our listeners, especially those who left us a nice review. Um, yeah, so until next time, take care and goodbye. That was the Dragon's Lay in association with the Riverside Sports Bar in Newport, an American style bar with a proper Welsh feel. This podcast is part of the Sports Social Podcast Network.